join in. West Valley Center for Spiritual Living. Good morning. Hello, everybody online. It's good to see you. Thank you for joining us today, where we remember that we are whole, perfect, and complete just the way that we are. And anybody who's new visiting today or new watching online, we welcome you. So today, after service, there will be refreshments in Papke Hall, which is over there. There's a potluck today, so there's some good food in there. Also, um, make sure that you visit the thrift store. There's going to be lots of items in there um, that you'll be able to take home, and it's wonderful. Yes, Mary? And everything is 50% off again. <laughs> and then next weekend, next Sunday, right after service, we are needing some help with, the, um, with moving furniture. We are getting our carpet installed. Yay! <laughs> And we'll need some help to move everything out of the sanctuary into Papke Hall and into the bookstore. So after service next Sunday, and then on Saturday, May 6th, we'll need help again moving things back in so that we're set for service on the Sunday after. Um, we also have a, an event today for Nancy Noel. We're going to be saying goodbye to our beloved. Uh, she'll be moving to California, and um, she has... a. Uh, Diane Carter is having an open house for her between 1 and 3. And there's information in Papke Hall. So I'd like to go ahead and say our vision statement. We are a loving, joy-filled community honoring the many paths to God as we learn and live the science of mind principles. And so it is. And now I just invite you to sit back, relax, Breathe and get centered for the Bradford's beautiful music and Reverend Tracy's beautiful message.
like a quiet place A quiet place within my heart I will wait upon the Lord Wait upon the Lord Be still my soul Be still Be still my soul Be still be still and know I will make a quiet place a quiet place within my mind I will wait upon the Lord Wait upon the Lord Be still my soul, be still Be still my soul, be still Be still and know I will make a quiet place A quiet place within my life And I will wait upon the Lord Wait upon the Lord I will make a quiet place And in this quiet, sacred space, there is but one essence. This essence is love and joy and beauty and peace and health and prosperity, freedom and light. And I choose to call this essence God. And this God permeates all there is, all there ever has been, and all there ever will be. And it shows forth through us as us. And I say a word of blessing for the Bradfords and their awesome music, which always, always, always touches our hearts and our souls and brings us closer together. And I say a word of blessing for Reverend Tracy as her message is divinely inspired and teaches us so that we can take these lessons forth and show it to others. And knowing that this service is absolutely perfect just the way that it is, I just release it into the law and together we say, and so it is. Me and this microphone. So my reading today is from um, The Hidden Power of the Bible by Ernest Holmes. And I kind of thought I found this interesting thing. God does not argue. I thought that was rather fascinating. A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followeth to me. And he divided unto them his living. When the younger son asked for his portion of goods, God did not argue with him. God never argues. To argue is to suppose an opposite, and God has no opposite. We argue to arrive at a correct conclusion. God is already the correct conclusion of all things. Therefore, he does not need to argue. Plantus, Plantus tells us that nature never argues, that it comp contemplates itself that its contemplation creates a form through which it may <clears throat> become expressed. Undoubtedly, this is the whole meaning and process of creation. And he divided unto them his living. There was no argument. God did not tell the son that it would be far better for him to remain at home. He did not say that he might come to want and suffer, perhaps starve. He did not tell him anything. He divided unto the, him his living. The universe gives us what we ask. Experience alone will teach us what is best to have. He divided unto him his living. No clearer statement of individuality could possibly be inferred than this. The son received exactly what he asked for. No more and certainly no less. The cup of his acceptance was filled from the universal 
horn of plenty. He could do with it as he chose. Think about that one for a hot minute. And so it is. Imagine what you want Then get out of the way Remember energy follows thoughts So be careful what you say Be careful what you ask for Make sure it's really what you want Because your mind is made for thinking And energy follows thought Your mind is in control Even when you don't know If you let it idle Ain't no telling where it'll go Wherever you are sleeping And your dreams take you away and Go on with your dreaming And listen to what they say And if you hear spirits talking, their wisdom can't be bought. Apply it to your thinking, cause energy follows thought. Even when you don't know If you let it idle Ain't no telling where it'll go Imagine what you want Get out of the way Remember energy follows thoughts So be careful what you say good to be here today and I'm so grateful to our beloved Reverend Karen and Reverend Clyde for inviting me to speak. This is my first time on the platform in my spiritual home as a minister. Okay. So I love first and uh, I'm so excited to be here. We're going to have some fun. We're going to raise the vibration. We are going to have a good time today. Can I get an agreement? fun. All right. So we're going to start this because God has been telling me you need to do this. And I'm like, it's not going to work. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. I'm going to do it. So we're going to start on this side of the room and we're going to do awe. And I'm right from the pole over men. We're going to do a good three awe men's. And I, you got to come out of your shell for me today because it's going to be exciting. All right. Don't leave me up here looking like a fool. Okay. All right. So we're going to do it on three. That's one, two, three, three. We're going to do awe men. Okay, got it. Three times. Ready? One, two, three. Ah, men. Ah, men. Ah, men. Woo! All right. We got that vibration up because we are talking today about vibing it into being, manifesting the ultimate desires of freedom, love, joy, beauty, bliss, stuff, whatever you want. It's yours. You know why? Because you are spirit. And, you know, in the honor of Reverend Cheryl. You are spirit, right? Woo! <laughs> yes, amen. You are spirit. And that works for me. Every center I go to, I have stolen it and made it my own. But first, before we begin, I got a joke for you. 
One Sunday morning, a mother went in to wake her son and to tell him it was time to get ready for church, to which he replied, I'm not going. And she said, why not? And he said, I'll give you two good reasons. One, I'm too tired. And two, I don't want to. And his mother replied, well, I'll give you two reasons why you should go to church. And he said, what? And she said, you're 59 years old and you're the minister. (laughs) So my husband made me get out of bed today. (laughs) So today we are talking about this little book called It Works. And it is a great little book. The author is unknown. And I think, why fix what's not broken? Use something that someone's got for you. And that's what we're going to talk about. Because since you are spirit, and you are made of spirit, and you are divine spirit, there is, you know, uh, what we call to me, as me, through me. And today we are skipping right to the through me because you are spirit and everything that you create is created through you. You are that powerful and I'm here today to remind you that you are that powerful. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right. And I want to hear it. I am that powerful. powerful. That's right. So Here's what Ernest Holmes has to say about this. My word is law unto its own manifestation, and it will bring me or cause me to be brought to its fulfillment. There is no unbelief, no doubt, no uncertainty. I know, I know that I know. Let every thought of doubt vanish from my mind that I may know the truth, and the truth will make me free. You are free, and the only thing that encapsulates us encapsulates us is our story about us the story is false the truth is who you really are you are spirit Woo! right <laughs> all right I'm gonna get y'all y'all gonna get there with me I promise um, so you are spirit and this book talks about because you are the thing itself it talks about that it works and I want to be here today to talk you through the process and to tell you my own little story that happened to me yesterday that left me totally dumbfounded and so grateful and that I listened to God about using this talk. <laughs> so um, Jesus says, ask, is it, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will open. He doesn't say, ask and you will receive. He says, ask and it is given. It is already yours. It is your job to sit in the space of vibration like you already have it. You know, I had this conversation with Reverend Sheryl, I think, which started this talk about something that I'm trying to bring into being. And she, you know, in her famous, girl, you forgot who you are. And I was like, no, no, I didn't. And I I hate when she reminds me of my truth, what I forget, right? I don't, I don't hate it. My personality is like, yes, I know, stop telling me. And she so lovingly goes, I got you, I got you. So I have got you today, right? I've got you and I am gonna remind you and you are gonna walk out of this building clearer that you create your own destiny. You create your own characters you create by the perception of your world is the quality the perception of your life is the quality of your world and it is your job to change the perception it is your job to look and see it is your job to find the truth to seek and ye shall find be the seeker until it arises in your mind that you are that which is seeking so today we are going to talk about that so We can attend to manifesting our desires, which, by the way, is a mental equivalent to the relationship we desire with God. Mental equivalence. We talk a lot about that in Science of Mind. And when we go out to seek the beautiful and wonderful things of life, because you deserve them, you ought to have them, we find certain happiness with each thing that we get right? We want a job. We want a loved one. We want a spouse. We want a baby. We want whatever we want. You are so powerful that you can indeed get that, and this little book tells us that. But what we are doing is replicating the mental equivalent of the desire to have the relationship with our beloved, with your true and higher self. And these things are given to you, one, to remember that you are that powerful, two, that you are the creator of your own life, 
And three, that the happiness that you feel when you get this objective form makes you happy, and happy is your true and natural state. The thing that happens with the uh, physical things that we manifest is that happy Happiness can be temporary. And what we are going for is permanent happiness. But why not use all those great things out in that world that bring that happiness, that remind us that we're that happiness? Why not have them? We're all here in this together. We're all aspects of God, independent and traveling and traversing our own uh, journey. And so why not have a good quality journey by recognizing the truth of who you are? Can I get an amen? The truth of who you are. Right. Okay. So, since we begin and we tra traverse the objective world, and it, it, it is temporary, we know this, but eventually this desire, just like the prodigal son, turns us home. It turns us back into the inward seeking. It turns us it turns us in and it turns us on to the higher vibration. You are my vibe tribe today. You are the vibration of the universe. I called you into being and you are here to support me on my journey. And I, in turn, am here to support you on yours. This is, this is how the world works. This is the beauty of our philosophy. This is what Ernest Holmes really wanted us to know. He wanted us to see our true self, our freedom. And it doesn't mean that we can't have our earthly desires. It just means that they're not a permanent source of our happiness. But by going after them, we feel that happiness. And then that happiness reminds us of who we are. And really, the ultimate goal is not to use those things for our happiness, but to be happy as they come by. Because the closer you uh, unveil your true self, the closer, I, uh, closer isn't even a good word, the more you realize your truth the easier things come, and happiness is a state of being in which you experience every day. Amen. Doesn't that sound really wonderful? Yes. All right, so you merge with the feeling, you merge the feeling with the fullness of life that is the presence. You have it. It is yours. It is now. So I really want you to think about something recently that really uh, you wanted and you, and you got, and I want you to think about that feeling of that happiness feeling that it always feels like when we get something we want. It might last a day, it might last a month, it might last a year, but it, 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 it doesn't matter. I want you to focus on the vibration of something that you did recently or got recently that made you happy. And then we just really want to sit in that vibration for a moment and we want to merge with that feeling. We want to understand that that feeling, that vibration that you are calling to mind is your true and natural state. When Jesus says, ask and it is given, this is the vibration that he is coming from. This is the state of mind that you need to be in to attract the equal and mental equivalent vibrationally to you. Okay? It is like turning into a radio station. It, what you want has a vibration, and where you're going has a vibration, and when you sit in happiness, joy, fulfillment, love, bliss, these are the happiest, the highest vibrations, and you don't have to do a thing. It will just stick to you like a magnet. You are it. It wants to find you, and you want to find it, and this is the work that we are doing not only to fulfill our earthly desires, but to fulfill the ultimate desire to return to our true and highest self 100% of the time. So, it is yours. It is done unto you as you believe. Therefore, you must prove it to yourself. You must prove it. So, step one in the little book, It Works. What do you want? Where are you going if you don't know what you want? And this might seem like an easy question, but it is no easy task. Because when I think about what I want, then I think, well, do, is that really what I want? And wait, but what if, what if something better comes along? And the mind kicks in, and then it distorts all of these ideas. But it is clarity of mind that kicks into action the law of reciprocation, the ultimate desire fulfillment comes from you knowing what you want. So you've got to make a list. In the book, 
the author says, when we can train our objective mind, the mind you use every day, to decide definitely upon the things or conditions you desire, you will have taken your first big step into accomplishing and securing what you know that you want. So when you train your objective mind, the mind you use every day, to decide definitely upon the things or conditions you desire with clarity. So think about a time where you knew what you wanted so clearly that nobody could dissuade you from it. It doesn't really matter, you know, it, he does go on to the, in the book to say, be careful of who you share your desires with because you can easily be talked out of them. I think it's something in the Bible like don't share your pearls with swine, which is one of my favorite thing because um, it, people are innocently, innocently, nobody I really don't believe has intent or ill will purposefully, but you know, if they're not clear about that, what they want, they don't want you to be clear about what you want either. So if you're going to talk to someone, you better talk to someone with your vibration or higher to remind you of your good and that whatever you want and is on that list, you can have it. It is yours. It is done. It is done. So to get what you want is no more mysterious or uncertain than the radio waves all around you. Tune in correctly and you get perfect results. But do this it is, of t but to do this, it is of course necessary to know something of the equipment and to have a plan of operation. So, it, it's so amazing. I sat down with this book. I always wait to the last minute to write my talk. I'm just that kind of person because you know my talk works me all week, and I always say to God, "You want me to talk about what? No, that's not it. No, no, no." And it all—it's always it. And I learned to listen. Um, and this book kept coming up into my mind, and I had to tear my house apart to find it. And I'm like, okay, fine, I give in, I surrender. This is what we're going to talk about. So someone here needs to hear it. I know I need to be reminded of it because I'm not always great at it. So that's what we're here together as a Vibe Tribe, is to hold each other accountable to our own good. Sometimes we need that reminder. So... I uh, decided yesterday, I was sitting, I called Fish, I was looking for this workbook that goes with this, and this idea popped into my mind, go to Office Mac and make, and make, and make copies. And I was like, I don't want to go to Office Mac and make copies, I, don't, I like my house, I'm comfortable, I have to put my bra back on. <laughs> yeah. So I got, Bill was over doing some yard work at my son's house, and I got dressed, and I went to Office Max, and I walked in, and I said to the guy, I need copies. And he's like, cool, what do you got? And I go, well, I have this little book. I took the staples out, and I, I really need to make some copies. It says in the book I can make copies. <laughs> and so he's like, great, no problem, I got it. You want me to make copies of this, and you'll make copies of that? And I go, yes, can you help me? He's like, absolutely. He goes over, he types in the code, puts them there. He goes back over to make this, and I look at it, and it says $99. And I looked at him, I go, is this going to cost me $99? And he goes, it would have. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I like it, would have. I like that comment. And so I said, okay, just hit continue. He said, yep, don't worry about it. So the copies are coming out, and he's over there, and he comes with the little copies, and he's like, would you like for me to cut these for you? And I'm like, can I say yes? Yes, I would like for you to cut these for me. And so he cuts them for me, and he does all this beautiful work. And then when it's, and then he comes over to check on what I'm doing. I'm like, what, what do you mean uh, it would have? And he goes, Everybody deserves something sometime, and today's a good day for you. Wow. $250 worth of copies. And he was like, today's a good day for you. And I was like, today is a good day for me. This stuff, it works. <laughs> and I, I went, walked out and I go, who can I call to just tell that I manifested without even knowing that I was manifesting? I, I just did it. It just flowed to me like a magnet. Like... Okay, God, you got me. I'm talking about this. And it was so excited. I was excited about copies, people, copies, <laughs> right? And, and I, um, I don't know who I called. I called somebody. And I was like, I should call Fish. I don't know. My son came home. I, I told my son. I told my husband. Oh, I called my daughter, Shauna. And she's like, well, of course it works. You talk about it all the time. Don't you believe it? And I was like, 
when it happens, you know. <laughs> so, and I go, but I still can't believe it happened to me. And I didn't have to do anything. I just walked through the door with a positive attitude, and life just flowed right through me. I had no thoughts until I was standing at the coffee machine, and then the doubt kicked in. Wait, is this right? Should I offer him money? Maybe I should bring him a Starbucks gift card. Is this really, like, and this doubt, this, 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 this thing, it came for me, and I was like, be quiet. <laughs> and my, in practitioner class, I used to say, get behind me, Satan. So I was <laughs> standing at the copy machine talking to myself, and the guy probably gave me free copies because he thought I was, you know, crazy. <laughs> I am. I am crazy. But it was so much fun. And so I got these copies and I, I cried when I got to the car because it was an instantaneous manifestation of a desire that I did not even know I had when I walked into the building. I wasn't walking in there looking for something free. I, the most I thought was, will I get a military discount? That's <laughs> Uh, I always, <laughs> that's it. And so I was like, and I walked out with this big old smile on my face with my box because at the very end he's like, those look heavy. Do you want a box? And I'm like, you're going to give me a box too? You cut it. You <laughs> I'm like, and I so wanted to ask him if he'd staple them, but I didn't want to push my luck. So um, so I got these copies and I, and I do have 15 of them. I didn't want to push it any more than that. And so they are here for you. They will be available at the end with the copy of the book and the workbook. Now, it looks like there's more than 15 of you. So great news, I have originals. So, you know, we have a copy machine. We can, we can do something about that. But they are here for you. So let's get started because my husband is watching the clock and he always reminds me, if you hear him say amen, he's telling me to be quiet. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so let's get clear. The plan. We're going to write down on paper in order of importance the things and conditions you really want. I got a big giant dry erase board in my office and I never write on it. And I was like, that's a great space. Fish and I, you know, we're, we're trying to be clear about what we want to be purposely to the universe. So we try on Fridays to meet, to come up with a plan for, for the universe to flow through us some creative way that can also create abundance for us and for others. And we usually end up sitting on the playroom floor talking to the baby. <laughs> so we, every time we leave, we're like, that was fun. We played with the baby, which brings you to your true self because there's no greater joy. But we don't use the board to write down our dreams. So we must, step one, write down on paper in order of importance. Step two of the plan, do not be afraid of wanting too much. Go the limit in writing down your wants and desires. You want this. It is important. You deserve it. I can't tell you how many IHOP nights in the very beginning when I met my dear beloved Reverend Cheryl that this beautiful soul was willing to sit with me till 5 a.m. We would leave class here. I think we were taking foundations for the fifth time for me. And I was like, you want to go to breakfast? And then Dana and me and my son would join. And we would sit there till 5 a.m. I think the IHOP people thought we were crazy. We were. We were crazy enough to know that this moment, she helped me work through some of my deepest and most painful conditioning so that I could be clear about what I want. And what I want was to be standing here in front of you today so I can tell you it works. I went kicking and screaming. It was painful. I got mad at a lot of people. <laughs> I cussed out some teachers, I think, maybe not. Uh, myself, about some teachers. I really complained about those writing those papers, but I was clear about my plan, and I needed my vibe tribe to remember why I was doing it, because this is my passion. This is my gift from the universe through me to you, and it is what I'm good at. So on my plan was that. And I'm only saying that story to you because it is not so, it's, it's kind of an interesting task to come about to what we want because why we can't have it usually comes first. And we got to work through that list or we need to find someone to remind us it doesn't matter. That's all fodder for the little mind. We are going for the big mind, the big mind, the mind of God that is, is you as you through you. It, God has got you. So do not be afraid of wanting too much. Go the limit. Number three, change the list daily, adding to or taking from it until you have it about right. 
Do not be discouraged on account of changes, as this is natural. There, there will always be changes and additions with accomplishments and increasing desires. If you change your list, it means you're working it, it means you're progressing, it means it's working. Because what we start out with isn't really what we want. We usually start out testing, is it really true? But we've got to go the distance, and the only person that can go the distance is who? Right. And you can call on a friend, you can ask a practitioner, you can have a divine gift like Reverend Sherl, but she can't do the work for me. I had to do the work for myself. She just reminded me of my truth on a daily basis, on a daily basis. And I'm glad to say that I don't talk to her as much anymore, but it's not because I don't love her, but she did her job. She did her job when I created her into my experience. She did her job for me, and so have many others. And I'm only saying that because I have a deep, profound admiration for creating her <laughs> into my life. And I would suggest you find that person for you, but you just have to want it. You don't really have to go find them. You just have to want it, and then you have to vibe it, and then you have to accept it. And it takes a lot of vulnerability to sit with someone and tell them what you think about yourself. It takes a lot of vulnerability to share your sadness and your pain and the things that you thought you have done wrong that are leading you and your perception, which determine the quality of your life. And when I met her, my quality of life was not so great because my perception was flawed. And it stayed flawed. I, I, I say flawed, but not in a negative way. It was keeping me from my greatest yet to be, from the joy that wells from within because I was paying more attention to the story I made up about my life than the truth of who I am. My truth flows and so does yours because you are spirit. spirit. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Woo. Okay. So, uh, so change the list daily, right? So write it down. Do not be afraid of wanting too much. Change the list daily. And then there are three positive rules of accomplishment. Three positive rules of accomplishment. Read the list, people. You got to read the list. Read the list three times a day, each morning, noon, and night. When Reverend Sherlock stopped by to bring me these beautiful flowers, because she loves me, I got these beautiful flowers, and I was telling her about something that I really wanted, and she's like, you need to sit with that at least three times a day. And that's how I know it's true, because she said it, the book said it, I can't, Ernest Holmes has said it, so we must sit. I heard Michael Beckwith said it. Okay, so when you're getting ready to talk about something and you spend too much time on Instagram, you will see the thing you're supposed to talk about is every video that I saw during the week. So Michael Beckwith is the one who said, sit with that vibration. Call to mind that thing in which you want. And then think about something that hasn't gone well and transfer that vibration to that thing. And sit with that vibration and watch how quickly it works. So three times a day, choose a thing that is reasonable to you because you must build your faith. You must build your faith. So if we try to start with personal habits or health issues or really big things that we ultimately don't believe is quite true that we can manifest them, it would probably become discouraging and you might give up. So start with something small. In the uh, book by Esther Hicks, she says, try a blue feather, a nickel, a penny, anything that will build your faith. So I'm at the store. I'm making copies. It was too easy. I was like, this is too easy. Like, does it, is this really what it's like? Is this? And, you know, I I'd like to believe that I'm somewhat versed in this after countless days of ministerial school. But, you know, I got to learn, too. And I really tried to talk myself out of the fact that I vibrated those copies into being. And so I came home and I'm like, let me read this book since I'm talking about it. We're going to talk about it. And so she, in the book, she talks about, it is obvious that you cannot acquire faith at the start. Some of your desires from all practical reasoning may seem positively unobtainable, but nevertheless, write them down on your list in your proper place of importance to you. When new desires deserving a position at the top of your list come to you, then you may rest assured that you are progressing correctly, removing from your list that which you thought you wanted, 
is another sure sign and indication of progress. I'm willing to let that go. This one has a higher value to me. So what is the thing that brings this to us? He, the author of this book says, the law of omnipotent power, the thing that plants the seed. I heard Sadhguru say this recently, that the world is working. Life, life is actually working. It works 100% of the time, and you can go water a mango tree in a really bad mood, and it's still going to grow a mango. That's time, but I'm just going <laughs> to, <laughs> right? But I'm going to keep talking because I'm not done. Um, so you can grow that mango tree. You can grow that, right? Water it. Life works. Your perception or the quality of your life is de determined on your perception. So if you mo water that tree in a bad mood, well, you're just going to be cranky. But that has nothing to do with the law, the omnipotent power. The author calls it Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Emmanuel is always working, and it is the thing and the, divining pre the divine presence, the, the omnipotent power, the law. It is always working. How do you know? You woke up this morning. You're sitting here breathing. Your hair is growing. Your birds were singing the si outside this morning. The sun was shining. This is all life. Life is ever-inclusive, ever-moving, ever. It is proving to you with each passing moment that it is working and all you need to realize is you are an aspect of that life you have dominion dogs are a part of that life trees are a part of that life they're all going about doing their things living in their natural beautiful self we as humans have this thing called a mind and experiences and people lied to you and you believed it and now you think that's who you are and you come to this church so we can remind you that you are not you are love, expressing intimately in every moment. And when we are not, we've just forgotten who we are, and we need to turn our little rear ends around, go back into prayer, call a friend, phone a vibe tribe, and get back up and read that list, and then I want you to come tell me what you have vibed into your existence. Because I am here to support you. If you follow this definite plan and carry out these three simple rules, the method of accomplishment will unfold quite mysteriously, just like an ear corn appears on the stalk, and in most cases, much sooner than you expected. Expect it. I am an expectimist. <laughs> I used to be a pessimist. <laughs> but my new word, it's a Tracy word, is expectimist. I expect my good, and gosh dang it, I'm going to have it. I am, I am, I'm not giving up on me anymore, and you can hold me to that. And I would encourage you not to give up on yourself, okay? It is time. Amen. We come here. <laughs> <coughs> okay, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Almost done. I'm almost done. It's a natural to be skeptical and to have doubts and distrust questions. But when these thoughts arise, get out your list and read it. Have it memorized. Talk to your inner self about your desires until the doubts that interfere with your progress are gone. Remember, nothing can ever prevent you from having that which you earnestly desire. Other things, other people have things. Why not you? Why not me? Say that with me. Why not me? That's right. Why not? The omnipotent power within you does not enter into any Con controversial arguments, right? Kathy told us that in her reading. It is a, this is what Ernest Holmes has to say. The omnipotent power does not enter into any controversial arguments. It is waiting and willing to serve you when you are ready. But your objective mind is so susceptible to suggestions that it is almost impossible to make any satisfactory progress when surrounded by skeptics. Don't share that with anybody. Read your list or find someone that you truly know is vibing higher than you. That is not an insult. That You will either meet their vibration or they will irritate you to all get out. <laughs> That's how you know you have work to do. Have complete and sincere gratis gratitude. The thing about creating the life that you want, whether it's seeking enlightenment or a personal thing or having the life of your dreams, is to be sincere and earnest in your thanksgiving. 
I was so grateful at that copy machine. I can't even tell you how grateful I was. I was like, oh my God, because if I'd spent 250s on copies, my husband would have divorced me. I was so happy. I was so happy. I was like, $99. Okay, um, but it was just so amazing. Can you tell I think it was amazing? It was amazing. <laughs> Therefore, when you are thanking your greatest and best friend, your omnipotent power, Emmanuel, for the gifts received, do so with all of your soul. Let it be reflected in your face. I had a smile. Man, Jesus would have been like, why are you smiling? Because <laughs> I had a smile. I was so happy, and I recognized this is my true state. Why don't I want to be here all the time? Why am I choosing grumpy mumpy? Well, I mean, I have a baby at home, so sometimes it's grumpy. But, you know, especially last week, because he had the rotor virus, and it was not pretty. I was grumpy. But you know what? You can be happy and have those things going on. You can be thankful that you even have to deal with those things, because the opposite is not being here. There's a reason to be happy, right? Illness, not illness. So I am so grateful for the people in my life. I'm so grateful for my little baby. I was so grateful I made copies at the copy machine. And I know, we're coming there. We're ending it, I promise. The power and what it does beyond understanding. Do not try to understand it, but accept it with accomplishment and the thankfulness and the happiness and the strength from within. One caution, the method of securing what you want applies to everything that you are capable of desiring. And the scope being so great is suggested that you first Look at your list and, and make it consist of those things that you are quite sure that you want because you will get them. Such an amount, such as things as money and accomplishment and passion, make sure that they have right human relations. Make sure that they vibe with the greater yet to be for everyone, for humanity, that, you know, because there, th we can want things that are not good for us. We can want things that somebody else has. I will end with this. I remember when Reverend Cheryl first invited me to her house, and I walked in her house, and, and we had lost our house, and I wanted a new house so bad, and I was like, oh, I love your house. I really want this house. And she's like, no, you don't. And I was like, no, I do. Why? You told me to want something. And she's like, no, this house reminds you that you want something. But this ain't your house. This is my house. <laughs> so she's like, go home and draw your house and make it so. And I did. I did. It took six months. And then I got that house. And I was so happy to call her and tell her, I found my house. It was so much fun. And so those desires, just make sure that you're in alignment with them and that they are for the greater good of all humanity, which means you. So you know things that lift you up and make you feel good and will bless your lives and the lives of others. So such desires are more easily and quickly obtained. Um, but again, you know the habits. You know, just start small. Accomplish the lesser things first. Then take the next step. And when that is accomplished, you will seek higher and higher and really more, more and more important objectives in life, like coming home to yourself. You discover the world is a beautiful place and it works no matter how it is done it just works you are a water you are a plant so water it grow keep going don't allow the bad moods of life to get in your way life works and when you realize that you focus on what you believe in and what you believe in you get the quality of life is within your control life is a life is an ing ing life is lifing you are being, things are giving. Follow that and you will be sure to be successful. And your existence as an offspring of life will be so powerful that you'll be magnetic beyond comparison. People will just find their way to you because you'll be like a beacon. You'll be your own love story. You will be your own love. And you will be the freedom, the awareness, the bliss, the love, that you so deeply look for in other things, you will become that, and you will be the magnet of your own life. Namaskar. Hey, okay, and we will have the copies for you. Julianne's gonna work that out. 
I'm putting her in charge. She's in charge of everything. Oh, okay, and you know, I, I love praying, but I really think I want this talk to stand as a prayer today. So I will just say, and so it is, and so shall it be. I see is love reflected shining back to me I just give thanks for all these simple things the joy and peace that gratitude brings that's why I'm grateful 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 for all the love that I have I am so grateful Grateful, grateful for all the love that I have. Thank you. Thank you, Bradfords. Thank you, Reverend Tracy. That was a beautiful, beautiful talk. I just love watching her work, don't you? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Exactly. So now it's time to celebrate the abundance of our community. We have our donation boxes in the back of the sanctuary at the door of Papke Hall and out the back door and then also in the bookstore. Um, and if you'll join me in saying our giving affirmation. I live in a consciousness of good. Divine love blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, and so it is. And just remember, if you need prayer after service, there will be a practitioner available to pray with you right up here in the front. Ready? You ready? Yep. Ready. I think I'm ready this time. <laughs> Please rise for our last song.
I have been put in charge of the mantra. Can you hear me? All right. I vibe it. I live it. I love it. And so it is.